Hey guys, and welcome back to another Conan Exiles video. Today we are back on the Exiled Lands, in the Tundra, building the Frozen Castle. Some of you may remember the Bloodfort build I did a little while ago. Well this build is thematically the opposite. The building and decoration process this build took about 10 hours overall, give or take, so this video will of course be a speed build. The decision to use black ice in this build was a bit of a no-brainer. It's the perfect choice for a darker themed castle, especially here in the Tundra. With the addition of the glass constructions and more mod, Black Ice turns from a good choice into one of the best material choices in the game for this sort of build. GCAM adds tons of Black Ice building items including fences, matriculations, windows and tons of other useful building pieces that really elevates Black Ice as possibly one of the best material choices for a castle, especially if you are aiming for some degree of historical accuracy. One of my major downfalls when it came to building castles before was that I tried a bit too hard to mix circular and square elements, which often ended up in either a very confused design or a design with clear issues and flaws that didn't work properly in certain areas. Therefore, for this build I laid out everything ahead of time with black ice fence foundations. This helped hugely with planning, and managed to avoid any of the design or structural issues I mentioned before. From the base plate, this build can look quite square and flat, but in the end it'll be anything but. I'll be building up the walls with layering elements, including windows, buttresses, and overhanging matriculations that should help to build upon the squared design and create something with a bit more depth and dimension to it. The core philosophy I worked with when constructing this castle was quite simple, build something large and intimidating. Having recently made the Blood Fort and seeing how much people enjoyed that, I wanted to create something that was a polar opposite, a well defended castle in probably the second most inhospitable area in the Exiled Lands, the Tundra. The plateaus in this area are the perfect place for this castle, so you know I had to build it on there. Throughout history, castles were planned with environment as perhaps one of the most important factors before any groundwork was ever laid. You can add as many buttresses and matriculations as you want, but if your castle can be surrounded and swarmed it will eventually fall. Those more decorative castles definitely do have a place in the Conan roleplay environments, but for this build I wanted something that would be near impossible to besiege, and the environment of this area was perfect for that. With only a small cramped gatehouse and a retractable drawbridge allowing access directly to the castle gates, moving any sizeable force against the castle in a head-on assault is very difficult. Even if attackers managed to get through the gatehouse unscathed, they'd come up against a solid metal castle door and find themselves in what I'm calling the kill box, a square enclosure where rocks, arrows and burning oil can be rained down upon them by the defenders above. Surely the attackers could bring rhinos or battering rams to break down the gate. Well, there's a ballista emplacement on the eastern facing side of the castle that would quite easily kill any large beasts or disable any siege machinery. Even if the attackers had the foresight to fight through the monsters in the crevices below the castle and scale the ice column to reach the walls themselves, they'd still be at a disadvantage. The land here is narrow and sloping, forcing attackers to bunch up against the walls, which, of course, have plenty of matriculations above to allow defenders to dispatch the enemy forces. Aside from these environmental and structural defences, the walls are manned by archers, with towering knights awaiting any enemy foolish enough to siege the castle in both the exterior gatehouse and the central gatehouse. If you've been around for a while, you may remember that I built a similar, although smaller, Black Ice castle quite a long time ago in the mountains of the tundra. This was a decent build and it was the first time I used the glass constructions and more mod to add matriculations and fences and such. Visually, it was a nice design, however at that time I didn't really understand how matriculations functioned in a castle. Having watched plenty of videos and documentaries about castles, especially some of Shadowversity's videos, it's now much easier for me to understand where I'm putting matriculations and why. Therefore, the actual defence of this castle is probably a lot more effective than any of my previous iterations. I guess the real question is, why is this castle here? The Frozen Castle has been the seat of a northern family for many decades, with seemingly the final resident now remaining alone in his castle. Unable to have children of his own due to his family's twisted past, surely fate would ordain his family name to the ages. However, it appears that all is not as it seems within the castle. 
rumour in the southern taverns from traders brave enough to visit, is that many of the castle guards do not seem to speak or show fatigue, and there are even rumours of their eyes glowing faintly behind their helmets. In reality, only the king knows what strange rituals happen in the shrine room, and it seems that as soon as someone is stupid enough to attempt to besiege the castle, the products of those rituals may rise when the Frostwatch Warhorn is blown. When it came to decoration in the furnishing phase, I wanted to capture a rustic feeling that fits the brutal cold of the tundra. Therefore, I'll be foregoing the classy lanterns, cosy balconies and marble fountains for open flames, dark brickwork and a grim essence of military prowess. I aim to give the build some identity with the Order of Arcanium Banners, a Age of Calamitous faction banner that I couldn't find much lore about so I decided to use it for this build. I also decided to dress all of the guards, human or otherwise, with the light, medium and heavy legion armour sets. I tried to include a specific armour code for the soldiers, with the human archers and other non-frontline defenders wearing either light or medium armour, and the less than human frontline guards wearing the heavy legion set. Light and medium are quite nice armours, whereas heavy still has that air of grim intimidation that is perfect for the lore of these guards. So I think that about covers everything I have to say for this build. As this is a speed build, I'll let the rest of the building phase run until completion, and then we'll take a look at the finished castle in its entirety. As usual, all of my links to my Twitch, Discord, Twitter, Patreon and NordVPN are in the description below. Also, at the time of recording, the channel is currently only 4 subscribers away from 10,000. 10k was always something I wanted to achieve since I made this channel way back in 2013, and at times it seemed like it would probably never happen. However, by the time you're seeing this video we will have passed 10,000 subs, which I'm honestly still struggling to wrap my head around. As I may have mentioned a few times before, I'll be doing my first survival playthrough over on Twitch and I'll be making some highlight videos to go up here on YouTube, so if you would like to see me embarrass myself on a game I have over 1100 hours on, please do feel free to drop a follow on Twitch to see me die to alligators around New River over and over again. That being said, I hope you enjoy the rest of the video.